Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week we are going to be finishing up making the vice jaws for this number six, very rare number six Parker, 250 plus pound bench vice. Something that you would probably see in a railroad shop, something where they did massive work. Very rare piece here and it needs some new jaws. We started making them a couple weeks ago. They have to be hand fitted. So the uh, guy who's got me the project, brought the vise to me so I can make sure that these fit as good as they can within reason. And then I've got some new tools to share with you that I've got in the shop. I think you'll find them cool. I've also got a new project that showed up at the place. Thanks to my wife, Elizabeth. I had something to do with it as well, but it's her project. You'll see it. You'll understand when I show it to you and hopefully like it. But first, let's get this project complete and then we'll move on to the other stuff. This vice is absolutely amazing. So I'm not for sure how well the size of this transfers over onto video, but this vice would be right at home in a large locomotive machine shop. And I believe uh, if the story is true on this, that that is where this came from. A big locomotive machine shop made to hold pieces that weigh hundreds of pounds. And I was also told that the jaws on this vice were hand fit to each individual vise from the factory. So in order for me to guarantee that the vise jaws that I made on the shaper in a previous video, actually in my last video, fit, the gentleman who is working on this vise was nice enough to bring it over to me. That way I can make sure and hand fit these to this vise. So let me show you how they fit currently. Then we'll go over to the shaper. We'll whittle out a bit of this, you know, keep test fitting until they fit as good as possible. A vise like this, deserves a new set of jaws. So a vice like this was definitely made to be used and this one was. Check out all the scarring on the back of this from hammer blows and and some torch marks and just you name it. This vice has got a story written all over it and that story is it, just hard work basically. So let me show you around this vice. Get you a good look at it. Get you let it so let you soak it in a bit and then we'll go over the shaper and start opening up those vice jaws and and fitting them. So here's a look at the front of this vise. It's been repaired up here with uh, some sort of weld on this lip, probably uh, damaged with a hammer blow. Uh, I was told that this end cap here that holds in the actual screw for the vise, I was told that that was missing when the purchaser picked this thing up and then it was recast by a member of some forum where they talk about vices and, and share information and stuff and it was recast in brass where originally I was told that it was cast iron, I think. But uh, still, I love the way that that looks, that brass on this cast iron. I think it gives it you know, quite a bit of accent. Inch thick handle, about two foot long, not near as beat up or bent as, as it could be, I guess. So overall, this old vice for its age, and probably as hard as it's been used, is in pretty good condition. So that light is just blasting through that window. There's the one and only original jaw that we have for this. You can see this edge here butts up against that ledge. This edge here butts up against down here. And it just, it's a good fit actually. Whoever fit these jaws to this vise, they did a very, very good job. So that's what we need to try to replicate. And the pocket that I cut is just a hair on the small side. So what we need to do just take this over to the shaper and just open it up a little at a time until it slides on there uh, just the way that it should and potentially even make this pocket just a little bit deeper so it butts up uh, back here in the back as well. So we are just about set up to tickle the back edge of this vise jaw. Now, in my opinion, these vise jaws should need to be driven on to the body of that vise, that way that they fit on nice and tight. Uh, I want a good snug fit, just like what they did from the factory. So if these need to come in and out of the shaper a couple times, you know, so be it. I want a good fit on these. So we've got our compound set up at 15. We've got our 15 degree angle tool, and I'll show you that real super quick. And then we'll make some cuts on this, take it over to the, to the vise and see if we can't get them to drive on. That's kind of the idea. So fitting these is a less than ideal situation because the vise itself is so heavy and so rough, I can't move it over here to fit it. Basically, I have to pull this out of the vise and go fit it. And you can't get a good measurement, a good solid measurement off of the rough casting on the socket that the, or the protrusion that this needs to fit on 
the best I can do is come over here and widen this gap just a little by removing this much shorter back lip, you know, five or ten thousandths at a time, and then pull this out of the vise, take it over there, fit it to the vise casting, and, uh, you know, just go back and forth if I need to. That's the best way that I know how to do, uh, you know, a job like this. <laughs> shaper in their mind they think of big chips flying off across the shop and removing a mass amount of material in, in a very short amount of time and although this machine is very capable of that it's also capable of just fine cuts a few thousandths at a time and that's what I like about this machine is just the versatility that this thing adds to the shop the universal table a few pieces of high speed steam you can get some you can get a lot of work done. All right, so I'm guessing that that is probably not enough, but I'd rather make two trips than mess it up or make it too loose. Super, super close. Oh. oh, that's good enough. Yeah, it's sitting nice and flush against this face. This face, we got a small gap back here, but that's not a flat surface anymore. It's gonna beat all the pieces. So trying to make that lip set absolutely perfect against an edge that's not perfect, not possible. That fits plenty good enough. I'm very happy with the way that, that fits. Now I'm gonna do this front jaw. Doesn't need much, just a little. Just need a little. So what I'm doing is making sure it's set down nice and flush against my parallels. I'm not taking big cuts, so I'm not cranking this vise down. I just want it tight enough to hold it. And I want it to set down nice and flat on these parallels. If I can not move the parallels in here, drive it down, I know that it's you know, set down good and flush on them. That'll give us the most accurate reset. Just gonna pull off 10. Let's see how that does.
still too tight. Goodness. So anywhere it's hitting, just taking this file and knocking off the high spots. Of course, it's been beat on in these corners, so they're out a bit. So I'm just taking this file and dressing those off. And anywhere where the jaw is rubbing when it goes on, because there's nothing about this that's true. Just hitting the high spots, knocking them down. That way I get the best overall fit uh, as I can, I guess. So I could not be happier with the way that these jaws fit. They, they got to be driven on and off. But when they get fixed to the vise, they're going to be pinned. So this will get drilled. It's already got pinholes in it, but matching the original pinholes up be basically impossible. So this will get new pins drilled and hammered in. Probably just tapered pins is what I'm guessing. And then um, it'll probably be bench grinder, not bench grinder, uh, angle grinder and a flap disc to profile these to the radius. I mean, it ain't gotta be anything perfect to the radius so it matches up with the back of the jaw there. And if this was my vice, this is just my opinion, I would weather these, beat on them a bit, use them, try to make them match the vice. I don't think personally that if it was mine, it, I would definitely make them match the vice. So, but that's up to the owner obviously to decide not me, I'm just fitting and making the pockets. But you get the idea. There we go, now I'm just gonna profile this jaw a little bit. I've already showed that in the past, so we may just quickly gloss over it. Hello, little girl. What are you doing? Hmm? Hello, little Cora. What are you doing, girl? <laughs> she loves to chase bugs, moths, butterflies. She is a total bug hound, ain't you, girl? Chases them. Yeah. Love to chase them bugs, don't you? Yeah, I know. So I love these little diamond files. They just last forever. I've had these, I mean, as long as I can remember. And they just, they just work well. You can get them, I'm not for sure where, but I know they sell them probably at a bunch of different places and you can get them in different grits. I've got probably four or five in different, uh, different micron diamond faces, I guess you'd say. Different grit, maybe, not sure.
that is close enough. So now that the weather's warm, I've got a couple project announcements that I want to share with you. Now, a lot of my viewers that have been with the channel for a long time, you guys will remember me working on a do-all bandsaw, a big horizontal do-all bandsaw that was an absolute train wreck of, in condition-wise. And we did make a lot of progress on it, and I had to stop on that project. Well, I decided to stop on it because of the condition of my shop was just falling down, and uh, you know, I had to choose what was most important. And fixing my shop took took Preston over the over the bandsaw and ever since I got the shop done it, you know it's pretty much set out there under a tarp and all of the work that I did to it you know was for nothing unless I finish it and what I would like to do at a minimum is just get that saw together and functioning so look forward to that now that the weather has pretty much straightened up uh, for the most part we will be getting back very soon uh, here and there we're not going to 100% focus on it on the do-all bandsaw so if you are familiar with it great if you're not go back in my channel and look back a little bit and you will see just what a nightmare that bandsaw was it was a total blast to get to the point that I did on it I really enjoyed all the repairs and stuff that went into it and I just don't want to invest that all that energy that I did and not finish it so look forward to that coming up. Also, I've got another massive project. It's outside. In fact, I've already started on it for the last couple weeks. Now, this is not my project. Well, it is, but it's not. It's Elizabeth's. Now, a lot of you guys know that Elizabeth had been looking for a truck. She really got excited when I started building this one, wanting one of her own, wanting one she could call her own. And well, we found that. And I want to share with you the truck that she got. It's it needs a little bit of work, but, you know, we buy what we can afford and fix them as we can. So let me share with you the truck that Elizabeth got. I completely agree with the decision that she made and I'm quite surprised that she actually went for it. So let me share with you what she got. Uh, don't worry. We're just going to touch on the highlights and stuff on the channel. We've done been down that road with this truck, but I do want to share it with you and, you know, while we get to those big milestones on it, I want to share those moments with you. So let me take you outside and share with you the pickup truck that Elizabeth got. It's going to be something, that's for sure. So check out the truck that my wife Elizabeth chose. This is a 1986, 56,000 original miles uh, crew cab dually. This truck came out of Florida. Came up north here to Kentucky, sat in the field for about 10 years, and we ended up with it. So I couldn't be prouder of her for choosing such an awesome truck. And we plan to take this truck, turn it around, not try to make it some show truck, but turn it around a bit, use it to pull my truck to some of the local car events like uh, LS Fest. Uh, we want to do Hot Rod Power Tour. We want to go to some of the antique machinery shows and things like that up until now we have not had the ability or the time to to go out and have some fun meet people you know travel around we needed a truck that was capable of pulling more than a box spring and mattress like my truck uh, currently you know half ton pickup trucks great if you're hauling a box spring and a mattress but if you're hauling much more than that not that they won't pull it but they just don't handle the loads well big trailer, you know, piece of machinery on the back. We weren't able to go get that kind of stuff on our own. So this truck should allow us to do that. And a two half ton truck just doesn't have the brakes and stuff that it takes to handle a load. So this thing designed to pull a trailer and should be a lot of fun for us. Now we're gonna do uh, 22 inch Alcoas, maybe a 6.8 drop. This thing's getting a 6.0 LS out of a 2003 uh, Silverado uh, 2500 HD and a 4L60E, uh, four, yeah, no, 4L80E transmission. So we've already got the motor and the transmission. We've already got a good start on this thing as far as getting the body back into shape, uh, as far as it does have some rust and stuff. So don't worry, this is not going to be something that we show on the channel every week, but I will probably do here and there just an update video for the guy, 
for the viewers that I got out there that are interested in this type of stuff, we'll still have our Saturday morning machining videos, but maybe uh, a week, every other week or something we'll do just an update video on, uh, on the pickup truck and where I'm at on it. So Elizabeth is super excited about it. I am as well. I think it's going to be an awesome truck when it's done. Tinted windows. We do have to redo quite a bit of the interior because it was a mouse hotel for 10 years in a, uh, in a uh, field. So we're going to do carpet, seat covers, headliner, uh, probably put a dash pad on it and dye some of the interior panels that are, you know, sun faded and stuff in it. But overall, the body on this thing is in really good condition as far as where I'm located, it's in really good condition. It does have some rust and stuff. I'm working my way through that, uh, getting that fixed. Fenders are good, doors are good, which is super strange that uh, they're not rotted halfway up because basically every one of these trucks uh, in my area that's been used uh, is. So surprisingly good condition for what it is. So let me show you around it and we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the some of the plans for it. This truck's basically complete. It's missing almost nothing. It's not been messed with. All the wiring and stuff is just like other than somebody put a radio in it. It appears to all be just like it was, you know, from the factory. Unlike my other truck, you know, and this thing has never, I don't think, seen a real hard day of work in its life other than maybe pulling heavy trailers. Uh, from the best as I can tell, the information that I got out of this truck, this thing was used to haul cattle. Uh, probably on the highway. I've already had the rear end of this truck apart. I've already tore into it and put rockers uh, in uh, the passenger side. Already put rockers there. It needs the driver's rocker put in it. But as far as major rust, this truck doesn't really have that much uh, considering where it's located. So it does need inner, inner fender wells. But uh, the front end's good and tight on this thing. It, like I said, it's a 50 something thousand mile truck. It just set forever. No motor and transmission. Didn't need that, didn't want the big block that was in it uh, to begin with. We're, we're gonna LS swap this one. You know, I didn't do that on the other truck simply because I wanted it to be a little more original, but this one we really don't care. We want it to be a reliable, as easy on gas as something like this can be. So we went with a modern, more modern um, uh, 60 LS and then the 4L80E transmission, which should be heavy enough to pull trailers with this thing and hold up. So as you can see, not really all that rusty. Does need rockers, but almost all of them do. Needs wheel wells. These always rotted out here, but you know, it's relatively good shape minus uh, the fenders, which always get wiped out on dualies. So that's not a surprise at all. Me and Elizabeth already got all of the interior stripped out. So there's really nothing for me to show you in there, but this is a Silverado. So power windows, cruise tilt, it was an AC truck. So that'll be nice and it will all go back like original and it's starting to rain so not a lot to to really show you right now we'll get into more into this in the future maybe midweek uh, do a quick update video just for the guys who want to see the, the progress on this and and the details about where it's going but i'm looking forward to getting out elizabeth is looking forward to getting out going to some of these events, meeting some of the people, being able to go pick up a piece of machinery if we want to uh, on our own without having to ask to borrow a truck because, you know, my truck's great, but it's more of a, you know, go to town type of truck and not uh, pull a heavy load. So there you go, new project for my wife, Elizabeth. I'm looking forward to it. You better believe that. And uh, so is she. So there we go. It's not gonna be a beauty queen at least not anytime soon we just want it to work and be clean on the inside so about a month maybe even a month and a half ago i went over to kbc tools and i picked up a few things that i either wanted or needed for the shop and one of those items more of a want really is this 604r stare it six inch rule hook rule actually drill point gauge Got some cheap Harbor Freight ones, but I've always wanted a really nice quality drill point gauge. So I broke down and I picked this guy up and I don't regret it at all. I've actually used, used it quite a bit. Look how dirty the package is just from this thing sliding in and out so much. So if you sharpen drills at the, at the bench grinder or really even on a machine and you want to just check, check the accuracy of it, your uh, 59 degree drill point, these are awesome. And also the hook roll, a lot of people don't know this, that hook can be moved to the other side. Really neat design. Let's see, get the right 
end here. This screw is really just a cam, so if you loosen it, it loosens, loosens this end plate and you can slide the hook either in or, or to the, completely to the other side, right? If you've got a place where you need to, can't get in there, or you get the idea. It just adds some versatility to the hook rule. So most hook rules will do that exact same thing, in case you didn't know. So there you go. Nice little Starrett 604R drill gauge. Very, very good quality. So I picked up that. I also picked up a very, very, very nice Mitutoyo 0 to 1 digital mics. I did not, and I never have, owned a set of digital mics. So I wanted to get a set. I've always, always loved these things. I've used them at work quite a bit in the past. But uh, here, I did not have any. So it picked up this really nice Mitutoyo. It's a IP65, so coolant proof. These things are made to work. I mean, you're not going to tear these up by, you know, just using them as they're intended, getting them a little wet or maybe dropping them from a short height. They're actually built extremely heavy. So kind of hard to tear up, but you get the idea. Very, very nice. I'm impressed with the way that this thing feels. Ran it through the gauge blocks, just checked all kinds of stuff with it. It seems to be right on the money. So there we go. A very nice set of zero to one Mitutoyo uh, uh, mics. Now this, in this box, is the last item that I recently picked up. I haven't even opened them yet. This is a overseas made set of two, four, six blocks. Most of us have a set of one, two, three blocks. I've got a couple sets of them, but I don't own any two, four, six blocks. So let's open these together and get a quick look at them. Now, I don't use these for, I didn't need an awesome, amazing, you know, super accurate set. Mostly uh, these things I use like on the milling machine for setup and stuff like that, just to take up space. It's nice to have something that's relatively accurate when you're doing that, but you know, I'm not measuring space shuttle parts off of these. So they don't have to be, you know, spot on. But you get the idea. Let's uh, let me get these unpacked, and we'll get a quick look at them. So I'm just taking a precision stone, running over these. We'll take them over to the surface plate. We'll just check them, see if they're parallel. Really, personally, I'm not concerned whether they're exactly two, four, six. I want to compare these two blocks to each other. Oh gosh, Cora, what are you doing? I just want to check them. I know, it's okay. You want to go inside, it's late. And she wants to rest. I know, you better a rough day being a dog. So we're over here on the surface plate and we are first going to check just quickly, are they two, four, six? External dimensions, we're going to use the DHS. This is a digital Mitutoyo height gauge. Check this thing out. What a massive height gauge. That is a huge cast iron base and half inch by looks like one inch or so a beam on this thing. Very, very heavy duty height gauge. So we'll run that over them real quick on their out external dimensions. Then we'll take our surface gauge with a tense indicator and we'll check each side. We'll compare them to each other. Check for parallelism. So I got my gauge zeroed. We're going to run through this super quick. I don't want to waste a bunch of your time. Just want to know, are these actually six, two, four, six? So showing a half thou over six. Just checking a couple places. Yeah, half thou over six. We'll check these with the, uh, we'll learn more with the uh, surface gauge and the tenths indicator. I just want to know, are they actually, you know, what they're supposed to be? That's showing a thou over. Could just be my measurements, this gauge. Um, I haven't cleaned this uh, surface gauge up. So they are indeed six inches tall. Let's see if they're two inches on the side. Yep, plus a half thou. Plus a half thou. Let's check for four. Yep, actually. Half thou over, so it's showing, at least my measurements, showing consistently over their, uh, 
uh, stated dimensions. So we'll check this one same way. This should be four. Yeah, half thou over, just like the other one. Yeah, check for two. Yeah, half thou over. So that's that's promising. Yeah, getting the same same reading with this height gauge on all of them. So let's get set up and check them with the uh, with the surface gauge and the tenth indicator. All right, so let's zero this 10 indicator. We'll check them on the long end. This is just going to tell us, are they parallel from one side to the other? And are they the same? So we're zeroed. Goodness, that's not even moving. One tenth from side to front to back. Not even a tenth, half a tenth. So this block is definitely parallel, at least on that face. Let's check it and compare it. Okay, so that is much better than I was expecting. These are within a tenth of each other and easily within a tenth of parallel on both uh, this face and the face that's sitting on the plate. So I'm going to flip these blocks on the four inch side and then we'll check that side as well. So if this trend continues, I will be more than happy with these blocks. These are budget blocks too. Well, that is amazingly good. Now keep in mind, a dust particle under these can make this read a tenth. It's almost just no needle movement. So let's check them on the large faces on the two inch side. I did not expect them to be that close. All right, let's check them on the large face. If they're going to be off, it's probably going to be on this face. That'd be my guess. A lot more surface area here. More room for error, I guess. Does not take much to be off a tenth. That is just impressive good. I couldn't get these this good and with my machines in the shop. that's easy parallel, at least as far as I've measured here, within a tenth on this block. Let's check the other one. Goodness. Okay, that's showing plus a tenth compared to the other block. Goodness. Yeah, I'm impressed with these blocks. So there we go. According to my measurements, these are, with, let's just say within two tenths of each other, to give a little room there. They're five times more accurate than what I was really expecting them to be. They're 
they're even on size, so maybe a little bit oversized, which is perfectly fine. All that matters to me is that these blocks are matched with each other, and they are, at least within reason. So uh, MHC is the brand of block, and I picked them up from KBC Tools. So can't say that they'll all be that accurate, but in my case, this set of blocks is, is impressively good. So now I've got a very nice set of, let's just call them a matched set of, uh, you know, two, four, six blocks. I don't use these as square, so I didn't check them for square. We could do that, but really that's not important to me. I just use them for setup on the milling machine or setup on the surface plate to do some measuring or, you know, to, to scrape something in. So there you go. Very impressed with the, with the quality of these blocks. That is very nice. I did not expect that. Little Cora, little Cora Lou. She's so pretty and so fancy. Hello, little girl. All right, guys, that is it this week. Um, on a personal note, I've had lots of things come up here in the last couple weeks, family-wise, and that's taken some of my time away from filming. So I didn't post last week. Uh, and there's lots of reasons. One is that my mother, who's 82, she fell uh, on an ice cube that my dad had dropped and broke her pelvis. How do you break your pelvis? You slip on an ice cube, I guess. But she's doing fine. Uh, she's up and walking around now and, uh, you know, on her way to, uh, to recovery. So I was really worried about her. The whole family was. And uh, that and several other things, like when it rains, it pours. I'm sure you guys uh, know how that goes. So it's taken a lot of time away from my shop time filming and raised my stress levels to the, to the max. Uh, you know, everybody, everybody loves their mother. And when something bad happens, you know, it's, it's all hands on deck to make sure that you know, she's taken care of. So, sorry, Cora. Glad to show you the tools that I got. Glad to get that vice done. Glad to show you Elizabeth's new pickup truck. That thing is going to be amazing when it's done. We're not going to, like I said, try to make it some showpiece. Uh, like, kind of got a little overboard on this one. But we are going to make it nice. She wants it, and I want her to have it. So that is it for this week. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated, believe me. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.